Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you the strongest Season 13 Warwick jungle build. It has a 67% overall win rate, and that is to rush down Ravenous Hydra into Divine Sunder into Bork. Something all three of these items have in common is self-healing. Yes, even the Divine Sunder heals you and it gives you juicy armor and magic penetration. The reason why you want to rush down Ravenous Hydra is it functions a lot like a Magia. So if you're playing crisp and clean, you'll be stacking it up and you'll be able to 1v9 your games. If you're a player who struggles to stay alive and you constantly find yourself dying, then instead of Ravenous Hydra, you should go for a Titanic Rush. But for the highest win rate possible, do Ravenous instead of Titanic into Divine into Bork. For our tier two boots, we'll go for Mercs or Plated against their team. Probably Mercs, we'll see. For runes, we went for Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity with Last Stance, Celerity, Water Walking, Attack Speed 80, and Armor. Starting with bot side for the best leash possible. Warwick's clears are, I'd say, quite a bit better for Season 13. Your little jungle friend does AoE true damage. You can go for the red or the green one on Warwick. If you're going to play him with Lethal Tempo, I think the green one's quite a bit better since it gives you tenacity and a shield. If you're going to be playing with Press the Attack, more of a bursty Warwick, then the red one will probably be better than the green one. I think the green one's just kind of overtuned. It's hard to match the value of tenacity. I'm not going to smite this because it's already below half health. We could have smited it at the start is typically the best way to do it. Or we could just save it for red buff and then have a smite when we invade on the Nocturne. Nocturne is one of Warwick's lower win rate matchups. It's hard because if he spell shields any of your abilities, he gets a lot of extra attack speed. You don't apply your damage from that ability and then he shreds you down. The key to beating him is getting off a full fear cycle not using your E early because you need that damage reduction because Nocturne is a shredder. We go ahead and smite red buff to start the camp. Warwick can definitely solo any champion in the game if he has double buffs plus level three. It's just a matter of do you play it properly. To play it properly you need to start out with the W for extra attack speed against them. Even if they're full HP your W will give you the initial 70% attack speed against them which is pretty nice. It's a big big deal. Nocturne's top side, I'm on Blood Scent. I'll go ahead and Ghost for this. We need to get there faster. I'm about to get a double. Auto attack Q through. I just got Ghost Extension, so we'll be able to walk this guy down. And that is exactly why you don't try to force something where Warwick's pathing into. It would have been safe to assume that we were pathing top side with a leash from bot. So Nocturne forcing a gank top lane level three with just red buff. In my opinion was a colossal mistake there's just so much risk involved and we catch it out don't be afraid to ghost early if you know you're making the right play and you're in the right spot ghosting early is generally a good thing because we got there soon enough to save the scion and we still got the ghost extensions can't believe Syndra really just did that yeah she just burned her flash to try to cheese me on scuttle what a butthole nocturne's gonna be here i have red buff advantage though unless he rage quit i don't have a smite is part of the issue he didn't take any of his okay he's bot side he decided to concede this maybe he didn't want to fight us maybe he thought it was all we were already gonna have taken it he may have just wanted bot scuttle he couldn't fight us though even with having spent 300 gold red buff is worth far more than 300 gold in a fight to the death it's probably more around 600 gold at least york a little out of position we need the scion cc uh, Scion CC is not there. I'll take two minions for my troubles and look for the reset. On your first recall, you want to get Tiamat. It's your most important item on Warwick. If you're a Warwick that dies a lot, you're going to go for Titanic. If you're a Warwick who you kind of know what you're doing and you want to carry, you're going to be going for Ravenous Hydra. Self healing is overpowered. If you look at champion win rates right now, the best builds are really champions that can abuse self-healing items because heal cut's been way over nerfed. Heal cut's practically useless to build on uh, most champions, I'd say. Thornmail in particular is absolute trash unless you're a champion that directly scales off of armor, such as Malphite or Ramus. Not a big fan of Thornmail. Building on someone like Warwick is not very good. You'd only want to go for Thornmel and Warwick if they're super physical damage heavy and they have a bunch of self-healing. So this game, they have Sona and Syndra, and even Varus has a decent amount of magic damage to where going Thornmel this game wouldn't be great. They don't have that much self-healing. Syndra's top. 
can clear our camp so fast with the team map plus jungle friend. They're all topside right now. We'll go ahead and continue the full clear. We can't kill them underneath turret. It's too risky. Once you take damage from an enemy champion, you will lose your movement speed bonus on your W. You won't lose the attack speed bonus though. And that includes using your W active. Even if they're full HP, you'll still get the attack speed bonus for the duration. Even if they're full HP and they hit you, you'll just lose the movement speed once the enemy champion hits you. Pop our W for this. Oh, he laid a ward here. I gotta hurry. Cinder's gonna rotate to this. I gotta leave. I need level six. Their top's rotating, their mid's rotating. The best thing we can do is just get out of here. I'm on Celerity Water Walking here. She can't kill us. There's no way. Water Walking is fast as Tier 1 boots. I want this wave shoved. I don't want Cinder roaming on me. Plus, we get to leech some XP there. Vagar's already sick, so we're only robbing him of so much XP. He's already on his power spike. Cinder stays to break wards or something. We're behind them here. They don't have items really yet. We'll go ahead and ghost pop W. Don't use your W until you're well behind them because they're going to start to run once you pop it. Going to focus the Varus. We get the double fear. Auto attack Q through. I still have R to gap close if he flashes away. Now we'll stay and shove wave without trying to steal all the last hits. This way my AD carry can still get the gold she needs. And I can get some XP. Plus the enemies will lose some uh, golden XP from uh, losing minions on turret. Nocturne's most likely on his red buff, but his bot lane's going to be right there, so I can't really invade. If Lux was full HP, we could look for a 2v3. Their bot lane's obviously going to rotate into that. If we're breaking a ward in Tri-Brush, they know exactly what we're thinking. We have Blood Sent off top side. We can run that in the mid here. We're behind her. We'll lead in with a Q. Auto attack into R. The best time to use R is when they're feared. That way they can't dodge it. We R'd her right as she was about to come out of it. Normally, I would recommend auto attacking then queuing. However, we didn't really have the mobility to run her down for the initial auto attack to where it was best to get off the queue because she might have tried to stun us. Your queue goes through all displacements and Syndra's knockback stun is a displacement. So is hooks like Blitzcrank, Thresh, Pike. You can go through all of that with your queue. We're going to have water walking. I'm going to hold on to my queue here. Auto attack Q reset, down she goes. Varus is by himself. He can't really do anything bot side on his own. We could reset for Ravenous soon. Just need a little bit more gold. Remember, your Q, your E, and your R all have more range than your base auto. So if you're already hitting them, you normally hold on to Q and wait to use it until they're about to break outside of your auto attack range or if you think they're about to flash dash or hit you with the displacement. So for example, York Cage is a little bit of a displacement. We could also use Q to swing through. Syndra stun push is their only real displacement on their team. Your R does th go through all CC on Warwick. All CC. You can't be CC'd if you're technically in midair. It's only once you land. Nocturne's doing the all in there. I'll smite the red buff early to take it fast. He's gonna lose his blue buff, his whole top side. We've taken a lot more camps than him. We're at 17, he's at 21, so we've taken roughly four more camps than he has. Cinder's not going to follow that in. I'll take his blue buff from Brush. He should step up, see if it's warded. Doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be. Okay, it is. That's not what I wanted to see. This may not actually be worth fighting for. This isn't worth it. Syndra's going to rotate. I haven't spent my gold. If I fight to the death for this, we're going to throw shutdown gold. The Syndra rotation is what worries me there. It's time to reset. Even with R, I can't do anything topside right now. Nocturne's there. He can R. Syndra's roaming around. They don't want me taking his camps. Now we get the Ravenous against their team. They have a lot of CC that Tenacity interacts with. Which is why we have green jungle item instead of red. That's why we're going Merc Treads instead of Plated. Tenacity doesn't interact with suppressions or displacements. They have Syndra Stun, Sona Stun, Sona Slow, Vera Slow, Vera Snare. 
Nocturne Fear, and York Slow. All of that our tenacity will interact with and shorten its duration, helping us to stay on top, keep autos on him, which we heal off of our auto attacks from passive, we heal from Q and up from R. Being as close as possible is ideal. We're behind her, she doesn't see us yet. We'll pop W, auto attack into Q, auto attack R. Ooh. I might have been able to hold Q for a little bit longer. I thought she was gonna flash sooner, but she just held it. So well played to her. If she didn't hold flash for that long, we would have gotten the attachment. When I did my auto attack Q, she was willing to wait. Down goes the Nocturne. Down goes the Syndra. We have full stack lethal tempo. It's gonna be hard for them to fight that. Varus is low mana. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this doesn't work. I don't have my W up as part of it. Hey, Sona. We get the Q attachment swing through against champions. 19 out of 20 times you swing through. It's a longer window to where if they flash or dash or blink, you'll get the attachment. It also puts you behind them, which is 19 out of 20 times where they're trying to escape to. The only time you ever rob by it is if you're going to die to their turret and you're trying not to go into turret range, so you just go in for a Q. Against monsters, you normally don't swing through them because it takes longer and you miss out on more auto attacks. But against champions, you always swing through. Against monsters, you pretty much never swing through because it takes longer. You just hold it down, hold your cursor over and hold it down for people wondering. R's up, Syndra, no full item. We're full item with a stacked Rav. I need to get close the distance. Auto attack Q through. She couldn't hit us with stunts since we were swinging through her and she didn't have flash this time. Look at that attack speed. Holy crap, lethal tempo is insane. Conqueror definitely works on Warwick. It's overall a lower win rate and lower pick rate. Lethal tempo is simply overtuned in my opinion. Uh... This item is giving us over 70 AD, and it's giving us over 11% Omnivamp. Nocturne does have Stride Break here. I'm not going to let them get this turret. They can't kill me underneath. Good luck to them. I still have my E. They might feel really strong because I'm losing a lot of HP here. Nocturne's almost dead. Yeah, you guys are both going to die now. Auto Q auto. <laughs> yeah, nice try to them. The lower in health they are, the more attack speed you get against them. They were super low. They thought they could fight there. And the lower on health you are on Warwick, the more you heal from your auto attack. So we had more healing and we had more attack speed against them. They needed to clear out. They were feeling cocky because I was taking a lot of minion damage and my health was already low. What they needed to consider is we have Ravenous Hydra. And this item's kind of overpowered. That's why Fiora is the highest win rate champion in the game right now. At most ELOs in region, she's at around a 56% overall win rate, which is kind of crazy. Normally, champions' overall win rate peaks around 52, 53 if they're really strong. So Ravenous is too good. Auto attack Q, we go through her displacement. We still have R. If she has flash, down she goes. Vagar still gets the assist, so he gets a permanent, I think it's 5 AP from kills and assists on his passive. He's almost within my W and got it. Turrets don't slow us down, only champions hitting us. We're getting 55% bonus movement speed. Get the Q attachment, but he soaked our Q. So yeah, it doesn't really matter though. We get the Q attachment. He basically got extra attack speed and blocked my Q damage. But uh, I held on to my E. I didn't use it early to where I was getting a huge amount of damage reduction. And then we got to fear him since he used his Spell shield to block Q. Kaisa's doing decently well, and she started the red buff. I'll let her have it. Nocturne out of position. Vagar gets the kill. I say we go for Dragon. Draxel, easy win con, even for a champion like Warwick. He's, Warwick is not a split push type of champion. Draxel is never the win con. for. If your win con is split pushing, Draxel doesn't play into that. So let's say you have a Fiora. Or a... Uh, a Trindomir on your team who's trying to split push. 
if if you guys try to get dragon you're gonna throw the game every time you're all gonna die on dragon fight and you're gonna lose so what you do is you let the enemies go for it you take turrets so in this case vork is not a split push style champion to where we need these dragons because in the late game it's gonna be 5v5 team fights so I, or maybe york on the split i can see that happening as well auto attack q through auto attack into r into q through out of art even if someone flashed immediately after R ended our Q would have given us the attachment there we pretty much have ravenous hydra finished auto attack Q through I don't want to fight him here this is a bad fight we're sitting on 4k gold it's a bad limit test he has as much or more gold spent than us because he has tier twos plus full item nocturne has tier twos plus full item plus partials so we need to spend our gold even though we could solo any of them still because we're warwick and we have level advantage we want to get our gold spent because if we die, they get a thousand gold. Absolutely terrible. If they were to get that. Bring him back into the game. Their most fed players are Nocturne and Yorick, kind of. Cinder is behind, so they don't have much magic damage right now. I'll still get the Merc Treads for Tenacity into Divine, into this. The more attack speed we have, the faster we can stack Lethal Tempo. And no matter how much attack speed we have, we won't attack speed overfill at 2.5. Because lethal tempo makes it to where you never attack speed overfill. We could get all the way up to six attack speed on Warwick with the W max if they're below 20% HP. Kais is leashing me because I let her have that red buff. That's kind of cool. I'm getting a blood scent off something. Oh, so I don't think Sona saw me there. She's about to die for that. Auto attack Q reset. We saw her with uh, oracles. I'll just let her have it. I don't need it. Hey, Varus. Nice try from the Varus. I usually keep my teammates' pings muted. At some point in the game, I unmute their chat if the game's going well. But they're just distracting. I only ever unmute because sometimes it makes good content. This dive doesn't make sense. I don't have R. Nocturne's going in. I don't have W to catch up. Seems to be inside a cage. We weren't in range to Q her, so we soak that knockback. Or if we had R, we could have jumped through that, because in midair, you're immune to everything. As long as you haven't landed at the end of it yet. Ravenous Hydra is giving a whopping. It's maxed out, so it's giving us a total of 85 AD. Oh, I might actually die here. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, not yet, baby. Ow! <laughs> that's so cancer strong dude that was so gross i thought for sure we were dead because we didn't have r up and we were kind of caged in wow we'll take it so yeah ravenous is giving us 85 ad 14 percent omni vamp 20 ability haste and attacks and abilities deal an additional 140 damage to enemies on near the main target. We're behind them. We could doubt we could W from here and still stay behind. Hey, Sona. We get the Q attachment out of R. Nocturne, what are you gonna do, buddy? Hit me with his stride bricks. I lost movement speed. I don't mind giving Lux blue. Lux or the Kaisa. I don't really need blue at this point. Syndra is a full item now. I think Lux should probably get the blue buff. She's going to run out of mana more than the Kaisa. Did I say Syndra? I meant to say my, my Lux is running out of mana. Got a full Bork. At this point... I don't think Sunfire is a great option. This is more if you're playing Titanic Warwick or Tank Warwick. Sunfire does more damage the more HP you have. The higher, the more HP you built or bonus HP. You'd go for Vistage at this point. I don't have R. So I can't run that down. I will take the red buff. Vistage final item will be... Dead Man's or Death's Dance. Probably Death's Dance. Death's Dance healing is kind of overpowered. As long as you get a kill before you die, you basically won't die at that point. Varus might, might have walked up for that red buff. Never mind. I can triple here. 
I'm gonna ghost W. Probably should have W first. We get the attachment. I think they're gonna let Varus die. They should have ran, dude. I warned him. I warned him, boy! I told you to run! <laughs> they didn't want to do it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're trying to quit now. Or <laughs> it's so stupid. Ravenous Hydra needs a nerf. Let's take a look at damage dealt, damage taken. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we had the most in the game. Looking at damage taken, we'd taken the most in the game. And looking at healing done, where is that at? Ah, oh, healing, healing done. We healed the most in the game. Dealt the most, took the most, healed the most. Self healing is overpowered. In no world should a self healer take more damage than tanks. But that's the world we live in because heal cut is crap right now. So it, it is what it is. Looking at runes, high value. Warwick is in a great, great spot. Just make sure you don't start with a potion. Go drink, green jungle item, lethal tempo, and two ravenous divine bork with plated or merc treads, and you'll be good to go. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.